Good evening. Scriptures don't say much about the wise men. There's one passage about them in Matthew's Gospel, and that's it. I often wonder how it all came about. Well, maybe, just maybe, it went something like this. A star they had never seen before appeared in the evening sky. Night after night it reappeared. They couldn't comprehend why. What could it mean? Why was it there? They had to understand. They gathered and read and pondered anew all the writings they had at hand. And finally, they came upon some parchments from long ago, brought back with captives from Israel, a language they did not know. What about these? We have to look. In here, the answer might lie. They studied and learned. They read and conferred. And then the Lord opened their eyes. These old Hebrew writings all seemed to point to a long-awaited one. From Genesis on, they wrote about the one who was to come. It's all about him. Abraham said, the scepter would never depart from Judah, and the obedience of the nations shall be his. David said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Isaiah told the people, the Lord himself would give them a sign. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And Micah told them where he would be found. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Did it take long for them to see the Lord was calling them west? Try as they may, they could not ignore him. The Lord wouldn't give them rest. Still every night the star was there. They knew what was their task. But where is this Bethlehem? How will we find it? We'll go to the king and ask. Hmm. They left from the east bearing gifts of frankincense, myrrh, and gold, offerings fit for a king who was proclaimed by the prophets of old. A difficult journey ahead, perils at every hand, but drawn by a star and urged by the Lord, they made it to this foreign land. Jerusalem up on the hill, audience with the king. When you find this child in Bethlehem, let me know and, and praises I'll bring. They found the child with his mother and worshipped him bowing down. Gladly they offered their precious gifts to this young king who wore no crown. With that, their mission had ended. There was no reason to stay, but warned about Herod in a dream, they went home a different way. We don't know what became of them. They played their part in God's plan. They offered their worship and lavish gifts and quietly left for their land. They chose to embark on this journey and saw prophecy be fulfilled. The Lord always uses the willing and wise ones. Seek him still. Well, good evening, everybody. We're so glad you came. We're glad you made it through the weather that's out there, I think. Um, tonight, we are, have the privilege to, to gather together to celebrate Emmanuel, God, with us. Um, and so we're going to stand together and lift our voices as one. 
Unfortunately, due to some technical difficulty, we don't have lyrics. But these are all well-known songs. And so as we sing, uh, we encourage you to sing along with us. Would you stand with us?
you may be seated. And we will invite the Redeemer kids for their presentation. All of the Redeemer kids who would like to, we would love for you to come up on stage. You can sit on the stairs. You can sit right here. We're going to do a little story, and then we're going to do a couple songs. <gasps> come forth. Come hither. Not right now. You can sit here, okay? Okay, kids. Who knows how many sleeps are left? One, right? One more sleep. Are you excited? Yes. Okay, are we good? Okay, so you guys sit down. You guys sit down for right now. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a story. This story is about a little boy, a big boy named Jake and his sister named Chloe. Okay? So Jake has to pick Chloe up from, guess what, musical rehearsal, church musical rehearsal. It's Christmas Eve, his mom works till 6, his dad works till 6.30, and it's his job to pick her up and then go home with her. He shows up at the church right on time at 5.30 when he's supposed to, and she's ready, and guess what Chloe's like? Does anybody have a guess what Chloe's like? excited. She is so excited she can't even stand it. She's jumping like from foot to foot. Who feels like that tonight? You can't even wait to go to bed because you want to wake up, right? Well, that was Chloe. And Jake was 14 and he's kind of like, oh, I have to go all the way home. And she's talking a mile a minute. <gasps> You guys wouldn't believe what music practice was like. Oh, my goodness, Jake, it was amazing, and I got to sing a solo, but I don't get the biggest solo, but it was still really, really, really good. And she's talking like crazy, and Jake comes up with an idea. They're walking through the snow across the field to their house, and they happen to just live on the other side of the field from the church. And he says, Chloe, if you don't talk, I'll do a challenge with you. And whoever wins the challenge has to get two of the other person's Christmas presents. And Chloe was like, <gasps> two extra Christmas presents? I'm in, I'm in. What's the challenge? Okay, whoever makes the straightest path of footprints across the field while we're walking home gets to win two extra Christmas presents. Chloe was so determined She's like, this is it. It's on. And you know what she did? She worked very hard. I'm just going to go down in front, sorry, so that you guys can see. Sorry, Luke. Here we go. So she, no, I said Luke. So here we go. Ready? She's like heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe toe. But she didn't have a line. She's got like an open field of snow. And she starts singing a song, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe. And she starts doing a little dance, because it's cold, right? And that helped. And she's going across the field. And Jake is not trying at all. He is not focused. That's how Chloe feels. She can see out of the corner of his eye. He's walking pretty fast. He is not concentrating, and he is not focused. So they get to the back porch, and she is so excited, and she's like, Jake, ta-da, two presents are mine. And she looks over the paths, and there are two very different looking paths. There's one that is as straight as a highway. It's as straight as an arrow. And there's one path that's doing this. And there was like a this. And she can't, she's like, and she looks at her feet, and guess where the wiggly path leads? Right to her feet. She's like, what happened? I tried so hard. I was like, heel toe, heel toe. I looked down. I never looked up. I just focused so hard on my feet. What happened? Jake, what did you do to get such a straight path? You know what Jake did? He said, guess what, Chloe? I didn't look at my feet at all. I looked at the porch light. Mom and Dad left the back porch light on. And the whole way home, I just looked at the porch light, and I just walked straight towards it. And I didn't take my eyes off the porch light. And I remember hearing that story when I was a little kid. And you know what it made me think of? What would your life be like if Jesus was the porch light and you never took your focus, you never took your eyes off him the whole time? What would your life be like? I think it would be exactly what Jesus would want to give to you, which would be straight. It would be just what he would want. 
What happens if you're looking at yourself the whole time? You're only worried about yourself. You're making all your decisions yourself. You're not looking at Christ or Jesus. You're not reading your Bible. You're doing everything just for yourself, by yourself. How do you think your life will look? Can you guys go like this with me? Oh, yeah. It would be a mess. I think it would be a mess. Chloe learned a really big lesson that night. She didn't get the two extra Christmas presents, but she learned a really big lesson because her dad explained to her afterwards that Christ is our light and that we should look to him our whole life long. You guys did a great job listening. Now, can you do a great job singing? This is the question. We are going to sing two songs for everybody. Are you ready? Yes. So can you guys stand up? We know these. We practice them from the musical. to follow the star if it will lead me to Jesus no matter how far I wanna be like the wise man struggling to bow at his Laying an offering before him, the Prince of Peace. I come for you, Jesus, I come to honor and worship you. Except these words that I humbly say. I come for you, Jesus. I come to honor and worship you here. You are the Savior of the world. for you. Okay, for this one, guys, I'm going to tell you to sing really loud at parts. I'm going to go down here really loud. Yeah, you can do it. Shepherd. 
That was really good. Good job. You guys can go back to your seats and sit with your mom and dad. Thank you so much. Would you stand and sing with us?
I would welcome the Barsevich family up to lead us with our final night of uh, our Advent candle lighting. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, what a joy to be out. The birth of Christ. And tonight, uh, Christmas Eve, much uh, anticipation, and yet uh, almost a full house. We rejoice. We light the final candle, Christ candle, the large white one, 
in the middle about our hopes and longings. We've been observing Advent for the past four weeks and talking about unwrapping the gifts of Christmas that accompanied our Lord and Savior. God has kept his word. His promises have been fulfilled. Jesus Christ is born, and he is all the good news we could ever dream of hearing. The hope, the love, the joy, the peace, the God of God has come, is ours, and is among us now. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Luke 2, and I'd like to read uh, just the, the, the scene in Luke 2, the first uh, 14 verses. Luke 2. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judah, Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and laying, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Uh, if you just bow with me in prayer. O oh Lord, our God, we reverently and humbly come this night to this scene, this truth. We are blessed to think about this joyous event. The Son of God has condescended from heaven, giving up his position to be a child. Oh, what love, a helpless, sinless babe in a manger, Jesus, the Son of God and the Son of Mary, Joseph. Lord, you show us that families matter. Our Father who art in heaven, his Son who was on the earth with his mother and father. Oh, Lord, God, we gather as physical families and one spiritual family in Jesus Christ. How awesome is this moment in eternity. Some never saw, some saw, some read, some have read about this holy child, our Savior born of the, of the Spirit. Why Mary? Why Joseph? Why Bethlehem? Why the manger? Lord God, you have all the answers. May we have the faith, a strong faith, to accept this truth, live a servant's life as our suffering servant did. Help us in this season to count the blessings of this free gift, baby Jesus. Father, 
As we gather this eve, may we reflect on the cost. We've been taught about the Apostles' Creed, and again, a reminder, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and he was in the grave. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and everlasting life. This is our Savior, our God. Who is Jesus, you may ask? Unashamedly, we believers proclaim Jesus is God. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is eternal. Jesus was virgin born. Jesus lived a sinless life. Jesus died a substitutionary death. Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus ascended to God. Jesus is returning. Jesus is the only way to God. So this priceless gift from God is free to all. May you unwrap the story of Jesus Christ this season and we, may we all be transformed into a new creation, new creature. Amen. Amen. Has come. The light has come. God spoke into the darkness, into the nothing, and said, Let there be light. The first thing God created was light. His very ma nature, manifest in nature, true, pure light. But we chose darkness nonetheless. Thank God for that gracious light, though we failed the test. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. A light has dawned. Sorry. A light has dawned. Imagine dawn breaking on that first Christmas morn. Imagine the temple shaking and the curtain torn. Imagine our sin him taking, that we might be reborn. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The light shines in the darkness, and our way is made clear from it. For your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Your word brings hope and life and salvation from your wrath. Your word, your word is light. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The light shines in the darkness, and our way is made clear from it. You Lord, keep, you, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. You, Lord, keep the world turning. My God turns my blindness into sight. This very light that dawned, the little babe so fond, he told us then, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And that very light... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that... Wor that word, that very light, our salvation winning. He passed the torch and lit our flame, for there is salvation in his name. You are the light of the world, he cried. Let your light shine, and then he died, that we might live, O glorious grace. The light has come and shines on every face. Shadows flee and darkness scatters. The light has come is all that matters. The light has come. All right. Well, thank you, Lincoln. Thank you, Barth Fitches. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you, kids and youth team and everyone and all of the work that's gone into this night. We so appreciate you. 
Uh, I've got, I want to just close with this word from the Lord. And so kids, I, want, I need eight minutes, okay? Can you give me eight minutes? And moms and dads, if you've got little ones who are restless, we love you. And we're not bothered by your restless kids. So just relax. And I want to point out something that we see in God's word in Isaiah 9. Because we've been following these, this thread of promise in the Old Testament. A week after week, that's why we've got these decorations. They're not just great toys for the kids, as we've learned. Um, but they're, they're here for a reason. We're following this thread of promise. It's the promise of hope in the midst of despair. It's the promise of life in the midst of death. The promise of redemption in the midst of betrayal. And as we'll see tonight, the promise of light in the midst of darkness. I would suspect that everyone in this room at one time or another has been afraid of the dark. Uh, kids, I won't get you to raise your hand, but you can do a little one of these if you're still maybe feeling a little bit afraid of the dark. The dark can be scary. Because in the dark, you can't see what's around the corner. You can't see if there's a, is the Grinch in the corner? Is this a bad guy? I don't know. I, I can't see what's around me. I can't see where I need to go. The dark is a scary place. And I would actually suggest that we never really grow out of that fear of the dark. We just fear different kinds of darkness. So within this room, I'm sure that there are many of us, and we're afraid of, of other kinds of darkness, like the darkness of, of this depression I can't get a handle on, or this, the darkness of this marriage that just seems to be falling apart, or or the darkness of, of loss and grief. There's all kinds of darkness that still bring fear and despair for us today. We're all just a little bit afraid of the dark, aren't we? And, and maybe for some of us, we're particularly mindful of, of that darkness in our lives even tonight. What do we do with it? What do we do with this darkness and this awareness of the darkness? Now, I don't pretend to be an expert on our culture, but I do live in it, as you do. And it seems to me that perhaps, especially in this season... Our culture's approach to the darkness in our lives is to try to drown it out with the glitz and the glamour and the nostalgia and the Mariah Carey and just to try to drum up as much joy as we can and ignore it, shove it in the corner. Is that what we do with the darkness in our lives? Well, as we look to God's Word, we find out that Christmas is actually not a time for us to, to suppress this, this darkness that we're frightened of. To, it's not the time for us to try to glitz over it with the Mariah Carey. No, the Bible says that Christmas is actually a time for the people living in darkness. That's what we see in Isaiah 9. He says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. So kids, if you walk into a, a dark, scary room, what is the first thing that you do in that dark, scary room? What do you look for? Yeah. You're looking for the light switch, and then you go to the light switch, and then pow, pow And then there is no darkness, there is light, right? And then now the room's not so dark and scary. Well, Isaiah 9 tells us that Jesus, God in the flesh, entered into the dark, scary room that is our lives, that is our world. He walked into the dark, scary room, and pow, pow He flicked on the light, the light has entered into the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. It cannot overcome it. The light wins. That's what we see. And that's why all through Advent, we've been lighting these candles. It's a symbol to remind us of this truth, that this light that has come into the world, Jesus, has cast out the darkness. That's incredibly good news, because if maybe you don't know this yet today, but you're going to learn eventually that there are some kinds of darkness in our lives that we can't handle in our own strength. Right? So when we're little and we're scared of the dark room, we can flick on the light switch for sure. But as we get older, there's some things we can't handle. Now sure, we try to develop good patterns and we discipline ourselves and, and get coping mechanisms. Okay, that's great. But there are some kinds of darkness that we just can't, I can't flip the switch. I can't bring dead people to life. I can't cure this disease. I can't make that person love me. Right? There's, there's these things I can't tell. Maybe there's this, I can't figure out this thing inside of me that catapults me into self-destructive behavior. I just, I cannot do it. Well, then what do we do? The Bible teaches us that, that all of the darkness, all of it, is actually the result of sin. You can trace it all back to the same place. It, it comes from sin. We were all born into sin, the Bible says. And the Bible says that all of us in this room perpetuate the sin in the things that we say, and the things that we do, and the things that we think, and the things that we don't say, and the things that we don't do, and the things that we don't think. The Bible teaches us that all of us in some way, shape, or form are contributing to this problem. And sin is the reason for everything that's wrong in the world and everything that's wrong in you and me. Therefore, if we want to find an answer to this darkness that we see in our lives, then we need to find an answer to the problem of sin. 
Now, the thread of promise that we've been tracking all through the Old Testament, we've been making our way through, and, and we've found all kinds of, of people who, who seem to be the one, because God said that he was going to provide a solution, he was going to send someone who was going to reverse the curse of sin and bring us back into blessing. So we've been walking through the Old Testament trying to find this promised child. But the more champions we find, the more of these heroes that we find, the more we see that they all fall flat, all of them. And so we look at, we see Noah, and we see Abraham, and we see Isaac, and we see Jacob, and we see David, and we see Solomon, and they have these bright moments, but they, they ultimately collapse and fall short. They're not the one that we need. And it's in that anguish, and that despair, and that longing, that God speaks through the prophet Isaiah. And so he says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. And we say, Isaiah, but How? Because we've watched all these guys, and they're not bringing any light into the darkness. In fact, they're making it darker, Isaiah. Who is going to come? Who's going to change things? He goes on to say, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called, what? Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Isaiah tells us that the darkness will give way. Why? Because this child who is coming is unlike any child who has ever come before or any child who will ever come again. He will be wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. He will not fail like all of the leaders who came before him and all of the leaders who come after him because he will be of a different quality than all of them. He will be no ordinary man. The child at the end of this thread of promise will be God. That's the great plot twist of the Bible and the great plot twist of our story. See, who can atone for the sins of the world? The world is a big place. I don't know if you know that. Who can bring an end to sickness and death who can reverse the curse and bring us back into blessing who can turn the lights on in this darkness these problems are bigger than any of us these problems require a divine solution and so 2,000 years ago the miracle of Christmas broke through the darkness and like a candle flickering in the night hope began to shine in this dark world once again Jesus came He came to set us free. He came to live the life we couldn't live. He came to die the death that we owe. He came to conquer the grave. He then ascended to his throne, and he promised that he will return in the same way that he left because Jesus is the solution. He is the child of promise that we have been waiting for, and he's the solution to this darkness that plagues us. And so, as I conclude, if you're here and, and I don't know who all is here, I haven't met all of you, but if you're here, and, and perhaps you're painfully aware of the darkness in this world and the darkness in your life, and you've been looking for a solution and you cannot find it, it eludes you. You can't flip the switch in your life. I want to tell you tonight that the child who has come, this Jesus, he has come to bring the light into the darkness. If we confess our sins and put our trust in Jesus, we will be saved. And you could do that tonight. You could receive the greatest gift that you've ever received in your entire life. I want to I wanna pray for us tonight. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Oh, great God, we love you. God, we thank you that you see us in our need, and Lord, you don't turn your attention away, but Lord, you lean in and you pull us close. I pray that you would pull us close tonight. And Lord, I pray this for every one of us. Lord, we all need to be reminded of this glorious truth, that this darkness that we feel, this darkness that we perceive around us, Lord, it gives way to light. It gives way to glory. Jesus has come so that darkness would not have the final word. Death would not have the final word. Sin would not have the final word. There is victory in Jesus, and we proclaim that tonight. And I pray that you would help us to believe that tonight. So by the power of your spirit, would you shine your light into our hearts? And perhaps tonight, would you shine light into a heart for the very first time? That we would see and believe and be saved. Oh God, we thank you for the gift of Christmas, the gift of your son the gift of the light of the world. And Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus' mighty saving name. And everyone said, amen. At this time, I'm going to invite the worship team up. We're going to sing one concluding song as we close the night.
Would you stand with us as we close with O Holy Night? invite you if you uh, would like to join us for worship tomorrow. We'll be here at 10 a.m. We'd love to see you. Um, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Thank you for braving the weather and joining us. Drive safely as you go home. Let me pray for you now. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he lift up the light of his countenance to shine upon you. And may the Lord be gracious unto you. Amen. Go in peace. Merry Christmas. <laughs>